So in this presentation, we're going to see how you can use MathWorks physical modeling products to simulate a dual clutch transmission. When I say the words dual clutch transmission, some of you are thinking about a system that looks like this. Two clutches operating in parallel, gears, synchronizers, and other physical components. And others of you are thinking about the software, including a state machine for gear selection, a control system for the hydraulics, and making the software AutoSAR compliant. And others of you are thinking about the next coffee break, or perhaps your last vacation in the Alps, or how your favorite team will fare in tonight's game. The truth is, all of these pictures, well, except for those about the coffee break, are correct. To develop a dual clutch transmission, you need models of the clutches, the gears, the synchronizers, all of the things that you can touch. You also need the control system and the software. Looking at this combination of systems from a control engineer's perspective, it looks like this. Another way of looking at this combination of systems is yin-yang. Yin-yang is used to describe complementary opposites, unseen and seen, that interact as part of a dynamic system. I think this is a great description of a dual clutch transmission or any system with a controller. MathWorks physical modeling products are focused on the development of the plant model. And the plant model supports you as you develop software and control algorithms, as well as optimizing system level performance. This is how physical modeling supports model-based design. There are a number of ways to get the model of the physical system. You could derive and program the equations for the transfer of power through the transmission. You could put this together in Simulink. You might start with a very simple model, perhaps a lookup table, but then you'll need to add in other effects, such as friction, wind resistance, other components in the transmission. And then you'll need to take care of other dynamics, such as what happens when no clutch is engaged, backlash in the, in the gears, and the engaging and disengaging of the synchronizers. You can see this is a very flexible method of developing a model of the physical system. However, your resulting model may be difficult to understand and verify. With physical modeling, your model matches the structure of the system that you're developing. For example, in a dual clutch transmission, there are two clutches operating in parallel connected via two concentric shafts. We simply assemble the SIM driveline components to match this structure. The gears in the dual clutch transmission are modeled with the gear block in SIM driveline. If I would like to add losses to the gear system, I can simply enable them within the block, and my diagram remains easy to understand. Important to note is that these are physical connections. They represent a bi-directional flow of power between the components. What that means to me is I don't have to worry about incorporating other effects from the other components in the, trans in the powertrain. I simply assemble my components and the system level equations are handled automatically by Simscape. I can include other physical domains into my system, such as electrical, hydraulic, and thermal. Taking components from the Simscape libraries, I can add hydraulic actuators for the clutch system, electrical solenoids for the opening and closing of valves, and electric drives for other mechatronic systems. In each case, I simply bring the components into my model, connect them using physical connections, and Simscape will formulate and solve the system level equations for me. If I want to know which equations are used in the component, I can view the Simscape language source code. Here I can see exactly the equations that define the behavior of this component. I can modify these equations to include the effects that I want. Because the Simscape language is based on MATLAB, it is easy to learn and I can use MATLAB commands in my custom components. So now you've seen how to build the model. That's only half as interesting as what you can do with the model. Coming back to the software side of our yin-yang, the plant model that you develop helps you develop, test, and verify your control algorithms. The plant model connects directly to algorithms modeled in Simulink and Stateflow, enabling you to test your entire system in a single environment. This helps you iterate quickly and avoid the pain of co-simulation. You can also animate the flow of power through your transmission using Simulink 3D animation 
giving you a visual representation of which clutches and synchronizers are engaged or disengaged. You can also generate C code from your plant model. This enables you to test software without hardware prototypes. Using MathWorks products for embedded code generation, you can generate code from the algorithm, place it on the production ECU, but you can also use the same tools to generate code from the plant model, place it on a real-time computer, and test using hardware in the loop testing. What this means is that you can test your production software and your production ECU with the same plant model that you used in desktop simulation. Using the same plant model means that you will be saving time and it will be less expensive. Your plant model also helps you optimize system level performance. For example, wouldn't it be nice if you could simply press a button and your vehicle level design would be optimized to minimize the fuel used during a standard drive cycle? Let me give you an example of how this can be done. First, our simulation needs to estimate the fuel economy. To get an accurate estimation of the fuel used, we can import measured data and estimate the fuel used based on values calculated in the simulation. Next, we need to select which parameters we wish to tune. An example of a set of parameters that we could tune are the gear shift schedule calibrations. These are the values that are used by the controller to determine when the transmission should change gears. Based on the speed that the vehicle is traveling and how hard the driver is stepping on the gas pedal, the control algorithm selects which gear to use. This example table of calibrations use about, uses about 40 different parameters. We define these parameters in MATLAB, and then Global Optimization Toolbox will find the set of values that minimizes the fuel used. This animation shows you how the table evolved during the optimization, which took about 4,000 individual simulations. Using the system level model and the optimization capabilities, we found a set of values that used 5% less fuel. Want this optimization, optimization to go faster? Well, we can run these simulations in parallel. Using Parallel Computing Toolbox, you can distribute these simulations to multiple cores on a single machine or distribute them across a computing cluster with many different workers. So what else can we do? To this point, we've spoken mainly about one-dimensional systems. Now let's take a look at three-dimensional systems or multi-body simulation. We've added new capabilities to sim mechanics that enable you to build modular, reusable parts and assemble them into 3D mechanisms, such as landing gear, scissor lifts, and engines. In Sim Mechanics, we provide a set of standard three-dimensional solids, such as cylinders, spheres, and bricks, that you can assemble into more complex parts. To create custom solids, you can define extrusions in MATLAB, where you define a two-dimensional shape in MATLAB and stretch it to become a three-dimensional solid. All of the parts that you define are completely modular. What this means is you can quickly build complex parts and mechanisms by using copy and paste. A single crankshaft part can be created by copying and pasting the solids that you define. And a single piston assembly can be copy and pasted to create a four-cylinder engine. When you run the simulation, an a a three-dimensional animation is created automatically. And you can review and replay and analyze this animation without rerunning the simulation. These capabilities enable you to add 3D mechanisms to your system level model, such as power seats and power mirrors. So hopefully I was able to tear your thoughts away from coffee for a few minutes to give you an impression of what you can accomplish with MathWorks physical modeling products. In this presentation, we have seen what you can model, what you can do with the model, and some of the newest capabilities available in physical modeling. Thank you very much.